that when she reached 21 years of age, she would be transformed into a terrible creature. Her parents sought to find a cure for this, but to no avail. And so instead, they raised her as they would any noble lady, and never told her of this dreadful secret. And so the years passed, until the winter of her 21st year. And one day, the lady fell to the ground, and all the people gathered around in, in concern. And when the lady rose again, it was with the sound of the snapping of bone and tearing of muscle. And the lady was transformed to a terrible creature, twisted and wasted, and all the people recoiled in horror. Filled with terror and revulsion, the lady fled from the forest. And for days on end, the hills resounded with her cries of anger, and at night, the hill of trees shuddered with her weeping. Her father sent out his men to find her, and find her they did, but the lady could not control the mind of the beast, and so she fell upon them and tore them all to pieces. At this, she fled deeper into the forest, so that no one would ever be able to find her again. Seven years passed in this manner. Now there were three brothers that would often venture into the forest. And one day, the eldest of these strayed further than he had ever gone before. And he came across a creature hiding in the darkness, and he called out to it. And he was surprised to hear a lady's voice answer him. And she pleaded for him to leave and to go. And he refused, saying that she was in distress. He just simply could not abandon her. And so the lady was quiet a moment, and then she said, if he could look upon her and not look away, then he would be safe. And he agreed, and the lady stepped into the open. Now the creature was human only in that it had two arms and two legs. For its limbs were twisted about as if made of wax. Its hands were curled in, its fingers were splayed in any which direction. Its bones were on the outside of its body. Its skin was so thin you could see the beating of its heart underneath. And it had three faces. And its neck could twist any which way so any of the three could be facing forwards. At this the brother was horrified he looked away. And instantly the creature fell upon him and tore him to pieces. Now the middle brother set out to find what had become their sibling, and he traveled deep into the woods, further than anyone had ever gone before, and he saw a creature hiding in the darkness, and he called out to it, and he was surprised to hear a lady's voice answer, pleading for him to leave. He refused, and so she gave him the same bargain she had given his brother, and he agreed, and she stepped into the open. This time he looked upon her twisted form, and he did not look away, and he looked upon the first of her faces, and it was frozen to a contortion. The muscles were so tight, the lips were pressed thin and fast, the eyes were seized so tightly, they almost vanished into the flesh. And he shuddered, but not took away. Then the twi twisted, and he saw the second face. And it was a grimace of rage. Its eyes were rolled back so only whites showed, the muscles were thick furrows, and his teeth gnashed constantly as they longed to be ripping him apart. And the brother quailed in fear, but did not look away. And then it twisted, and he held the third face. And it was smooth and placid, like cool water. The lips were fine, the cheekbones were delicate, and the eyes stared straight ahead at nothing. And it was as if they were made of glass, and you could see behind them dark figures moving listlessly. And he was filled with such despair and hopelessness that he could not help but look away. And the creature fell upon him and tore him to pieces. Now the youngest brother set out to find out what had become of his siblings. And he traveled deep into the forest, and he found a creature hiding in the shadows, and he called out to it. And he cried for him to go and leave, lest the same fate would fall him. And he refused, and the creature made the same bargain, and he agreed. And so the creature stepped into the open. And this time, when he looked upon his form, he did not find it so monstrous, but more wasted and kind of pathetic, and he felt sorry for it. And he looked onto his first face, and he saw sort of a trembling there, as if it just simply longed to relax and let go. And he looked upon the second face, and he saw it with mechanical repetition there, and knew that this was not something born of anger or bloodless, but just something that was. And then he looked upon the third face, and he saw the faintest of trembling in his eyelashes, and it longed to simply close its eyes and shut away those figures. And he did not look away. And the curse was broken, and the lady fell to the ground, human again, for the first time after seven years. And the brother took off his clothes and he gave this to her. And he took off his shoes and gave these to her so that she would not have to walk barefoot. And the lady stood and told him to take her by the hand and lead her to the father's hall. And as he did, the lady trailing beside him like a ghost. And all the people ran ahead to inform her parents. And she arrived at the hall she was greeted with disbelief. And that disbelief quickly turned to boundless joy. And there she lived for the rest of her days in peace and prosperity.